Okay, so um, because we recently kind of entered the realm of uh, Jewish food and the cooking thing, um, somebody had suggested I check out um, people reacting to Jewish food. So um, I just typed that in. Uh, somebody also dropped me a few links, so I might check those out as well. So this one is called The Ultimate Hasidic uh, Food Taste Test. It's a short video, so not too long. Um, but this gentleman's face uh, right here doesn't uh, give me hope that he's enjoying what he's having. Um, but yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. Uh, no, I've never had uh, kosher food. Kosher before. food? Mm -mm. I've never heard of it until now. Yeah, uh, I work for Israelis, so most of it is half the time. I have a Jewish friend named Carl. <laughs> hey, Carl. <laughs> I guess that's the qualifications. Eh? He has a Jewish friend named Carl. Ooh. Sorry if that's loud. Okay, so we have schmaltz herring. The English term schmaltz is derived from Yiddish, meaning rendering of animal fat. Yeah, so um, I did read this, and a few have had mentioned that you never really use schmaltz, I guess unless it's during Passover, I think a lot of people said. So it's, is it fish cooked in a, uh, like, rendered animal fat? With, I guess, is that, uh, was that matzah or, like, crackers? Herring, fish. What it's does a, it look a... like? That's fish? Sushi, but not as fun. Oh, it looks slippy. Slimy. Yeah, it's very slimy. Yeah, I mean, it does have that, like, kind of glossy look to it, so I would imagine it has... It, and it looks... Yeah, it's pretty raw, right? Very, like... Oh, so since it's raw, it's probably not cooked in it. It's just what? Is it just covered in the schmaltz? It's more like a, like a, a tasty mm. loogie. I like that it's still, it's still shiny. It's got, like, a gloss on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's kind of that's nice, right? You can take a girl out... Uh, for this stuff, right? They like shiny things. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. It's good. It's, it's good. definitely good. I don't know if I would ever refer to a food as a tasty loogie. Uh, this is gala, okay, also known as pichka, 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 pichka maybe. Ooh, sorry if I butchered that. Is a traditional Ashkenazi Jewish dish prepared from calves. Oh, so like the hooves? This is kind of looks like a little bit like a gelatinous, uh, gelatinous meal. Oh man. Okay, so that's why his hands were like that because of this. Yeah, I'm not sure if I would try this. Actually, I probably would try it. I don't know how much I would like it, I would say. It Ugh. smells like a jellyfish from the beach. And... Oh, no. oh my god. Oh. Get the gooey part or the other part. This looks like what I find inside my boot on a rainy day. Well. It's not bad. <laughs> that guy's like, it's not bad. Now, is this like, uh, are these all, well, not that we've seen the whole array of foods, but are like, are certain, are these, uh, specific foods eaten specific times of the year? Um, cause yeah, this seems like you would eat it not always. Whoa. I don't know if it's moving on its own or if it's cause my hand's shaking. Yeah, this does not get the rabbi's <laughs> blessing on this one. <laughs> Grievin was a savory snack of choice among Ashkenazi Jewry until it was supplemented by Doritos and Bisley. It kind of looks like uh, like pork rinds or yeah, just like a crackled skin. Is it like chicken skins? Oh, there it is. They're crisp chickens. Uh, or goose skin cracklings. Yeah, this would be actually delicious. I love like pork rinds and pork cracklings, so having chicken 
It would be amazing. It's like the best part of KFC, you know? You just take off the skin and you eat the, the crispy skin. Wow, this is definitely Hasidic. Yeah. Uh, this is called Grieven, uh, because um, once you eat it, you are going to be grieving. You have tricky food. That's what this is. Yeah, this is... Tricky food? What, what does that mean? You have tricky food. Fried something gross. Nah. Fried something gross? What's wrong with chicken skins? Bad. It's really good though. I like it though. It's, this is good drunk food. If I was given this, I'd say pass. Okay. I you would say pass? What? I'd be like, give me a big plate of this, please. Can't, I, I don't, I don't. You wanna try another one? I'm good. Me too. Okay, yep. Yep. Hick. Or yep, chick. Yep, hip. The Polish remix on Cholin. Oh. Well, Cholin's like a stew, though, right? This kind of looks like a cake or something. All right. Whatever happened to names like, you know, Big Mac? Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Mick Chicken. Mm -hmm. It looks like the cake your uncle tried to bake but put it in the oven for too long. The depression in the cafeteria when that kid has to take this to lunch. Like Thanksgiving stuffing that just didn't make it. Yeah, I, I guess that's kind of what it is. It looks like just like a dense breading of some sort. But like the Cholin for me is like the stew that we've seen in those videos, like the potatoes with the beans and this. So I wonder what the Polish version. I'm assuming it's a sweet thing. I'm going to be very upset if it's not. I, have no I don't think it is, uh -oh. buddy. And no, yep, it's not. Is this the Thanksgiving food or everyday food for y'all? Oh, it's okay. Sabbath food. Okay. I knew it was holy in a way. <laughs> <laughs> so, Yisharmali uh, Ujil. Ujil. 19th century remix of the already existing Kuj. Okay. So maybe this is the one that people mentioned in the, the comments, the like noodle version. Because that looks kind of like a spaghetti on the top. Well, here we have uh, what looks like a dessert that's wearing a wig. Oh, it tastes awesome. Oh, you like this? <laughs> oh my god. That's really good. Yeah, it's definitely a spaghetti glued to itself. No, this is definitely probably uh, top one, number one so far. And he said, uh, you can get this here at Breadberry? Like, a oh, whole? Oh. <laughs> if that wasn't a plug for a place, I don't know what is. Breadberry. I wonder, I guess this is like a US thing, right? Like this, I don't have to make it? Mm. You want to Cholin and Kishki. Okay, Cholin was developed over the centuries to conform. With Jewish laws that prohibited cooking on the Sabbath. Yes, we know that already. Yeah, this is kind of more like what I what I was expecting the Polish version to look like. Kishka is a Jewish dish traditionally made of sausage or stuffed intestine with a filling made from a combination of meat and meal. Oh. It kind of looks like a... A Salisbury steak, in a way, or kind of like yeah, like a hamburger or like a just a patty, but thicker and yeah, more Salisbury steak, I would say. I see beans. <laughs> What's wrong with these guys? It just looks like a stew with a hunk of meat in it. You know what? I think I'm gonna end up disrespecting somebody's jacket on the subway ride home. No right. bean should be this big. Hmm. No, it's actually pretty good. I like it. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, not bad. Best thing so far. See, don't knock it till you try it, right? These guys are already <laughs> judging it just from the look of it. I love Jewish people, by the way. Hey, Carl. What's up, man? <laughs> Your food is great. Thanks for watching. Oh, that was pretty cool. I like that one. That was uh, seven years ago that was created. Okay. Well, that was a quick and simple video. Uh, 
you guys let me know in the comment section below like i said if if some of these foods are specific i know a lot of them that we saw were probably for the sabbath but like that hoof one like i don't know when you would eat that so um as always hit the subscribe button hit the bell notification so you know when i post uh let me know in the comment section below what you guys thought about this one and i will catch you on the next one see you later